Welcome to Chris Cook for you too. It's really, really cold here in Virginia. Snow is everywhere. So I decided to do a roast today. I'm going to do a beef brown roast. Now, I got this roast here at my price club here in Virginia. And this is actually the way it comes and the way it's sold. This is a beef round. I'm going to slice it off, put it on a slow roast. Here's the ingredients that you're going to need to make this dish. You're going to need olive oil, thyme, rosemary, onion powder, garlic powder. Now I prefer to use minced garlic, but the reason why I'm not is because not only am I going to stuff or pierce it and put seasonings in, I'm also going to put it all over the roast. And garlic, minced garlic or any type of garlic, garlic cloves, they tend to burn very fast. So to keep from having those little burn pieces, I'm going to go ahead and use a granulated garlic powder. You're going to need salt and pepper. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to wash my roast and dry it off. And I'll be right back to show you how to put together this delicious piece of beef. Be right All right, back. now I'm back and my roast has been um, washed and it has been dried. On this, you see a layer of fat. This is a good thing because what this actually does is it helps to tenderize your meat and it helps to baste it because as this, this um, side of fat starts to heat up, it's going to start to drip oil and what that oil does is it will baste your lean parts of the meat so you don't have to go in and do any basting so when you get that fat even when you get marble inside of a roast it's a good thing because those little pieces of fat that you see uh, trickling all through your roast that helps to make your meat tender and moist. So you need that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pierce some holes. You pierce a hole just by taking, you know, some sharp knife and you make a little hole. Once you make that hole, I'm going to go ahead because I mixed up all of my seasonings and I put them into this bowl along with some olive oil. And I'm going to stick that down inside of each one of these holes. I'm going to make about six. And what that actually does is that helps when you, once you stick the uh, seasonings down over in these little pockets, pierced pockets that you have, the seasoning is going to go all through the roast. So as the roast cook, it's going to be picking up flavor from the seasonings that you've actually put in these little bitty holes. So I'm going to do this, and this is going to help my cooking process. Now, I have a pan that is sitting over here, and it has my rack in it because I don't want my roast to sit in oil juices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my roast on that rack. And I'm going to slow cook this. And I'm not going to cook it covered. And the reason why I'm not going to cook it covered is because I don't want to pick up a lot of shrinkage. And when you don't cover it, your roast does not have a chance to steam. And that's, what, that's why your roast come out pretty much the size, a little bit of shrinkage you're going to pick up. But it's pretty much the size that's when you put it in the oven so you won't pick up a lot of shrinkage now at the end of your cooking process what you will have to do is allow this roast to rest so that your juices can be redistributed what do I mean by that that means that you will take some type of covering mostly aluminum foil you will put it on top of the roast and allow this roast to just rest before you cut it you're going to allow it to rest on top of the stove for at least 15 minutes. Now, I've dug about five holes. I'm going to dig one more or pierce one more. Okay. Now, I'm going to take and put seasonings in that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the remainder of my seasonings all over my roast. Now, I don't like my meat really well done. I eat my meat medium well. 
my family likes it well done so normally they get the end pieces and I'll get like the middle piece because that's cooked like I like it and the end pieces will be cooked like they like it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow roast this in my oven now to slow roast this roast for every pound I have about a six pound roast you're going to need at least 30 minutes of cooking time so if this is a six pound roast and I'm going to cook it uh, 30 minutes then we're talking at least three hours for this roast to cook and we're cooking it on 325 degrees so that should be enough cooking time but I'm going to use the thermometer okay and this rosemary I'm telling you rosemary just does wonders when it comes to to me when it comes to roast especially if it's beef roast or if it's lamb, you can't you can't really get a better seasoning than rosemary when it comes to those types of meat. Now I've rubbed my uh, ingredients that you saw me with, and of course, again, I'm going to put your measurements at the bottom of the tutorial when it comes to how much you're going to use. But you're going to use the same ingredients that I have actually used. So I'm going to take this roast I'm going to put it in my pan and I'm not going to cover it. Now, I am going to stick my thermometer in it. And this is a pen type thermometer. I do have these sold on my site. And these is for your smaller roast, which this is one of your smaller roasts. So I'm going to take my thermometer and I'm going to stick it into the lean, the fattest part of this roast or the thickest part of this roast. When this reads 100, I'm going to take it out at 145. If you like your roast to be well done, you would leave it in until 160. That's not going to stop my end pieces from being a little bit more done than my middle piece, which is exactly like I want the roast. So I'll put this in my oven. And I'll bring you back after it cooked, uh, after the roast is done, really. I'll bring you back in about three hours. Okay, now right I'm back. back, and I just took the thermometer out, and I cut a piece of the paper. My thermometer reading was 145. Yours should be 160. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover it with a piece of aluminum foil, and I'm going to allow this to rest for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I'll bring you back, and I'll slice off a couple of pieces just to show you what this actually looks like. So I'll be right back after 15 minutes. But it came out very nice. Okay, now I'm back. It's been about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna take this roast off so I can slice up some pieces of it. And I'm gonna slice it down on this uh, cutting board. And it's still very hot but it's rested enough. So when you allow it to cook this way and allow it to rest, then you should get some juicy pieces once I cut into it. Now, like I said, my family, they like the end parts of it because the end parts of it, as you can see, that's um, the leaner, I'm sorry, that's the more well done portion. But I want you to look at this closely. I'm going to press... See those juices? That's when you know your roast is good. When the juices come out like that, it means that your roast is good. Look at that meat. That meat looks very, very good. Now, I could have taken off the top portions of it, but the meat part of it is done. I took mine out a little bit early just so you could get a look at it. Look. When those juices flow down like that, that meat is very well done. Now this is exactly like my family likes it. I like it a little bit more rare cooked. So when I get to the middle portion, which I'm not going to go that further, that far, it's going to be exactly like I want it. Now, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to layer, and meat looks real good. I'm going to layer some pieces on this plate that I have. I have a plate that's sitting on the side. Matter of fact, I'm going to take off. Just going to remove the fat portions and I'm going to go ahead and take off some of this meat. Okay. And put it down on the plate. And then maybe I'll put one more slice. One more slice of the roast. And this is not an expensive roast to buy. This one was, like I said, I got it in my price club. I think it was like $22. And I made cabbage with that. So I'm going to go ahead and add some cabbage to the plate. And I did make some Some sweet potato pancakes so I'm just gonna put a couple I'll put three down the plate so that's my dinner for today and in the next video after this one I'll show you how to make the sweet potato pancakes but that's what I'm having Chris is having cabbage beef round roast and sweet potato pancakes now on a day like today it is still cold here in virginia we are still snowed under no place to go and nothing to do but sit down and create recipes so that's what i'm going to do look it's it, even though that snow is out there i thank god for even being here and this is a meal if you try it i think you're truly going to enjoy it and as always thank you for watching chris cook for you too bye